welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today we're talking with 12 time FPS world champion, co founder and chief gaming officer of Ready Up, and esports Hall of Famer, Jonathan Fatality Wendell. Welcome, Jonathan. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? Nice to see you again. Great. So um, I'm sure you're asked this a lot, but and I can kind of guess what your answer is, but what is the origin of the tag fatality? Uh, so actually as a kid, uh, I used to play a game called Mortal Kombat a lot. And uh, I used to um, go out with my friends, go to like a 7-Eleven or, a, you know, wherever an arcade was and save up some quarters. And we'd play Mortal Kombat when I was probably only, uh, you know, 10 or 11 years old. And this is before the internet came out. So I, would log on to BBSs and it would ask me what my alias was. And I was like, I didn't know what my alias was. I didn't have one yet. I was 11 years old or so. And so I kind of chose the name Fatality because in Mortal Kombat, when you uh, do the finish move, you've already won, but now it's all about the show. And so uh, Fatality was kind of like a metaphor of like me, like not only dominate my opponents, but do it with like a show, make it exciting for people to watch. And that was kind of like my, Hallmark thing was always to perform my best on the biggest stages, and I was able to do that. And what was your evolution in FSP games? FSP. In FPS games? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, well, I think it was, you know, obviously playing Mortal Kombat, you know, playing a 1v1 type of game was uh, very exciting to me. Uh, and then when the internet came out, you had games like uh, Doom and, and uh, Quake and Unreal Tournament and all these uh, different first-person shooter games. And I just kind of like took it by storm and basically started, you know, playing uh, a lot online and eventually playing in tournaments around the Midwest. Uh, I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri, and then eventually I started winning all the tournaments in my area. And by the time I turned 18, just graduating uh, high school, uh, one of my friends told me about this tournament in Texas. And I went down there. I had 500 bucks in my bank account and I ended up winning over four grand that weekend playing a uh, Quake 3 Arena. And. I was like, holy crap, you can win money doing this? This is insane. <laughs> uh, and so I remember slapping the check on my dad's table as the young kid. And obviously, uh, you know, it was just an amazing uh, moment for me as a young kid and, uh, you know, as a young adult at that, at that point. Uh, but uh, I basically started a career from that point on. What did your parents think of that? Uh, well, I mean, I actually had to move, on my, move out of my mom's house to pursue this uh, <laughs> dream of mine. Uh, and my dad understood my competitive drive and he let me, uh, live with him, uh, for, uh, about a year or so. But in the first three months, I, I won that $4,000 check. And so my dad was just really kind of just happy, you know, just like, you know, you know, it's kind of cool that your son's talented at something where you can go make four grand on a weekend. Uh, that was a lot of money back then, especially for me, I only have 500 bucks in my bank, in my bank account. Uh, but yeah, so basically after that, I, um, you know, it was basically proving, you know, my family wrong a lot of times, but, uh, you know, my whole career, I've been kind of like trying to prove that esports is even a thing. Uh, I was at the very beginning of esports and showing people around the world that you can make a living playing video games. Sure. And so what are some of your career highlights as an esports professional? Well, obviously my very first highlight was, you know, um, going to, right after that tournament that I won the four grand at, I got a chance to go to Sweden to represent USA. Uh, I went there and I played against the top 12 guys in the world that were invited there. And I beat all of them. I won 18 games straight, straight losing zero. Uh, and then instantly I was kind of like the number one seed. I was the number one gamer in the world at that point for Quake 3 Arena. Um, shortly after that, I won tournament after tournament after tournament. Went to Korea and South Korea, won the gold medal there in 2000, uh, representing the USA again. And then uh, went to Germany, uh, won there with Australia, won there. I just started just traveling uh, all around the globe and just kept winning. Um, and uh, the biggest tournament in my life was actually in 2005, where I was playing uh, a, a, a season-long million-dollar world tour uh, in a game, a game called Painkiller. It's very much similar to Quake and Unreal Tournament. It's a first-person shooter. Um, and in this game, I was kind of the underdog. Uh, there's another player that was definitely the better player, uh, you know, uh, leading into it. And I was kind of fighting from behind the whole time. And eventually uh, at the, the biggest moment, the biggest stage, I was able to uh, 
to overtake him and win the the hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar championship in New York City. Uh, we got I got featured on sixty minutes. I was on MTV True, True Life or not MTV TRL and uh, got front page of Business Week, Time Magazine. It was kind of a wild time uh, in my career, um, but uh, definitely capitalized on the moment. Okay, and there's a picture of you with a whole bunch of checks. Why don't you tell us about <laughs> that? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's just, that's a lot of travel. <laughs> that's, that's traveling all around the world. Uh, there's one from France there, uh, one from Texas. Uh, and then there's, uh, looks like uh, Singapore, more Texas. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot, a lot of tournaments in there, but basically just travel around the world, uh, winning, uh, you know, all these checks at a young age was, it was really phenomenal. It was really crazy. Uh, I knew I was doing something special and different than everyone else. And I was kind of like the living proof, uh, that you can make a living playing video games as a career, career not just as like a, a hobby. And and let's show the Doom um, Championship picture. Uh, let's hear about that. Yeah, this was a fun tournament. Uh, this was a tournament that was put on by QuakeCon. Uh, QuakeCon is like one of the biggest land fest uh, in uh, America. Uh, about over like you know two three thousand people usually show up to this event. They probably have traffic over ten thousand people come throughout the weekend. It's a really fun event. It's a great way to bond with people in the community. Um, but in this t in this event specifically, uh, they're actually they were launching the game Doom Three, and so none of us have fully played the game yet. Like some of us were there like the opening night of the game going uh, for sale, and we bought it, um, you know at Best Buy or wherever they sold it at back then when you actually physically go to the, the store and get it. Uh, but yeah, we played for like five days and then obviously went to the tournament and then uh, we didn't even know there was money up for grabs. Uh, the The news was that there would be something fast to win. And I'm like, oh, what's fast? Like I was thinking like a car or something like that. Cause I, I've won cars before. I've won a motorcycle. I've, I've won different prizes playing video games. So I was getting kind of excited because like, you know, something fast could be a vehicle for sure. And I was really excited about that, but uh, they never really announced it. So I, I remember going to Steak and Shake with a bunch of my gamer buddies. We were all there having a great time. It's really just a great time to hang out with a community of people that you typically hang on, hang, hang out with online, but now you're, you're in, in real life and you're doing things in, in uh, person. And I remember one of my buddies telling me, he's like, hey, you're going to, you've already won 10 grand. I'm like, what do you mean I won 10 grand? It's like, well, 25 grand first and 15 grand second and 10 grand third. Like you're already in the top three. You're guaranteed like at least 10 grand. It's like, no way I'm winning 10 grand this weekend. And they're like, yeah. And so then I went on to play in a tournament and I ended up winning the whole thing and won 25 grand that weekend for playing doom three. So uh, it was a really cool uh, experience to win that, but also just uh, playing a new game that has like a new fighting technique and being able to be that dominant uh, at the early stage of a game really showed kind of like my skill set type of well, there was a, a, a big change from when there was a tournament in 1972 where the prize was a subscription to Rolling Stone magazine, right? Yeah, I, 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 was, I was a part of that lifetime, uh, you know, part of the, those uh, days of early esports and Quake where I would get like a cell phone for a year, like where I'd get internet uh, for a year for free. And, and the, the, I think the most thing I cherished the most was actually just, actually just this piece of paper that says I was a champion. And I put that in my algebra uh, binder in school, and I would brag to my friends behind my shoulder all the time. Uh, and it was just a lot of fun back back then. And the, it was the days before esports was really a career; it was just a hobby, and people were just having a lot of fun playing and bragging out uh, online. Let's show the um, Intel um, photo. Um, so, tell us about that tournament. Yeah, well. Um, so this tournament obviously uh, was the World Tour Finals, uh, the check there. Um, and that was just kind of like my big win. It was the, the finale of winning the World Tour that year. Um, it basically, the tournament was kind of built out to be like this number one pain core player in the world versus the number one uh, gamer in the world. Uh, so that was my arch rival uh, all year long. And, and then I was able to walk away with it. So uh, you couldn't ask for a better like rivalry, like person versus person kind of experience. It's it's like what you see in the movies and what you see in the, uh, you know, in scripts and so forth. So I, I we we really captured a true story there and and uh, kind of the true underdog story. Uh, but it was a good battle. Sure. And a viewer asked, um, what games? What are some of your favorite 
games and um, do you play any casual games? Yeah, I mean, I think all the games I play have some competitive uh, aspect to it. I just love competing in general. That's kind of like in my blood. Um, so uh, obviously the last few years I've been playing a lot of PUBG, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Uh, it's been one of my favorite games. Uh, Right now, I've actually been playing a game called Diabotical. Um, you can check it out. It's diabotical.com. It's a free-to-play game. Um, but it's very much like Quake. Uh, it's an arena FPS shooter. Um, and then the games I play casually, I mean, and like I still kind of take kind of serious, is like I play some mo mobile games as well. Uh, whenever I'm taking a break or, uh, you know, probably passing out, going to sleep, I'll play a game called Clash Royale. Um, and so those are kind of like my games I like to play. And, and uh, sometimes you can find me uh, live streaming these games uh, online. Okay, yeah, that was my next question. Where do you? I, I was trying like... to beat you to it. I was like, I was <laughs> pre predicting the question. That's my skill. <laughs> <laughs> do you stream on Twitch? Uh, yeah, so I stream on Twitch, just twitch.tv slash fatality. Uh, I stream on there as much as I can. I'm actually holding a tournament this weekend for Diabotical. Uh, so um, trying to uh, you know have different avenues of. Uh, engaging with the community and people and I feel like people really like seeing me host events as well not only just playing so um, I'm trying to uh, explore with that uh, concept and idea with holding my own events it's called the fatality and uh, on Saturdays we have an open tournament for like kind of like the community and then Sunday is like the finale where I bring in top eight players that I invite to play against these eight players who qualified for the open tournament and this is kind of a fun a community event. Uh, I, I'm doing my second one uh, this weekend and looking forward to do more in the future with other game titles as well. Okay, so now I'm sure a lot of people want to hear this. What advice do you give to gamers who want to go pro? Well, I mean, the biggest thing about going pro is, you know, I think, um, you know, obviously you have to be skilled and you have to have a passion to compete. You have to understand people's, you know, what, what they're thinking before they even think it. Uh, you have to have good hand eye coordination, you have to have good reflexes. And a lot of this stuff actually comes from also being, I think, very well rounded. Um, I grew up uh, playing sports my whole life. So I understood competition from the sports side of things. I understood how to outthink people and play tricks on them. Uh, I do the same thing in the video games. Um, and you try to get under their skin a little bit. You try to, you try to, you know, get them to make a mistake. And, um, but also like I, the things I did outside was I also, I ran every day. I ran two miles every day. I, you know, I'd run two miles, do some push-ups and sit-ups, and that'd be kind of like my quick workout for the day. And then I have to get back to training and doing my, my, my real job, right? Playing video games. Uh, and so, you know, I think that's uh, some of the good advice of being well-rounded, but the best way to kind of like give yourself a jump start in the game is be a part of the alpha, the early beta test of games. Make sure you're there at the very beginning. Uh, because that will give you a big edge over your competition and also will keep you up with the meta and finding good people to train and play and play with. Sure. And what do, what would you say to people who say that esports isn't a sport? Well, I mean, you know, I, 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 I never really get really into that much. I mean, I, I, I have a lot I can back it up with, you know, of what I do in traditional sports and how I outthink people and, and play tricks on people in real sports. Like, like when I play tennis, like, you know, I hit certain shots to hit them in a certain spot. So then I move my opponent to a certain area then I can hit the winner. In the video games, I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to get inside his head. I'm trying to shoot shots in a certain way to push him into a corner where I can, you know, finish him off with a rocket launcher or a shotgun. Uh, so the, I think the same uh, gamesmanship and, and so forth that I see in traditional sports, I can use that also in, in the game. And I don't know. It's worked for me, and um, you know, it's very competitive. So if you like competition, uh, esports is right up there with with the best in traditional sports as well. I interviewed um, one of the um, people um, that is involved with the Arcade Blaster. Have you heard of that? Arcade Blaster? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just have to uh, have you watch my video of that. It's pretty interesting. It's a it's a tool that you can use in FP. Uh, FPS shooter games where you, it's like a gun and you you play it's kind of cool um, oh cool yeah that was an earlier show that I had so is um, it like is it based around like reflexes and like shooting targets yeah yeah oh it's cool. Really cool 
yeah, yeah. Uh, PewDiePie is their um, is their spokesperson. Oh, that's cool. Okay, well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, tell us about uh, your company, Ready Up. Yeah, so Ready Up, we're a B two B company. We're trying, uh, you know, our goal is to help uh, you know people that have their own operated channels um, to engage with their audience more. Uh, so we want to help uh, their audience engage in the events, uh, to buy merchandise. Um, to add events to their calendar so they can stay informed of when events are coming up. Uh, so events that we, we look at is very broadly. Event could be, you know, it could be a tournament. It could be a qualifier. It could be a physical event you want to travel to and go watch like a big tournament. Uh, but also it could be a DLC is coming out. A new season is starting. Uh, a new cosmetic item dropped in the game. Uh, so we want to help keep people engaged in what they really enjoy and love. And we, we believe uh, with our platform and how we can offer our platform to businesses uh, can really help engage their uh, audience in a more powerful and meaningful way. Okay, and so why did you start that? Um, the reason why I started is because it's something that I, I obviously want <laughs> in my life. Because, uh, you know, it's hard to keep up to date with all the games I love to play. Um, so when a new season starts for Diablo or when Diablo 4 comes out, I want to know like pretty fast. And, you know, I can't rely on the TV telling me when it's coming out because the TV is not really that gamer-esque unless people are spending tens of millions of dollars for marketing budget to let you know Call of Duty just came out. Uh, but, like, you know, the idea is that you have all these games that you really fall in love with, even, like, PlayerUnknown Battlegrounds, PUBG. It didn't have a lot of mainstream marketing. It was kind of word of mouth and got exposure. But as the years went on, I was still loving PUBG. I wanted to engage more with it. But, like, a new map came out. Well. I have to rely on someone telling me what a new map came out and so forth. I think with Ready Up, we can help the mainstream be more connected with the gaming world and esports uh, so that we can get that information out faster and quicker. And then and that turns in more gamers, more people playing esports, more competition, more marketing dollars, more sponsors, just everything gets bigger. Um, so I think we're still at the infinite stage of how big esports and gaming can get. And uh, my goal with Ready Up is to kind of fill that void in and make it a, a better wellness for everyone that really enjoys the games they play. Sure, and what is your role with the company? Uh, so my role is like, I'm co-founder and chief gaming officer. Um, you know, a lot of these uh, concepts and ideas have came from myself personally, uh, just because I've been uh, studying the market for a pretty long time. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this for a couple decades now, uh, even though I look a little younger, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's something that I've just been noticing that's been lacking and missing in the space. And so um, right now I deal with bringing on new uh, you know, leagues. Obviously, we work with uh, NACE. Uh, we work with uh, ESL. We work with a lot of collegiate level um, uh, leagues and organizations uh, to help engage against their audience. So uh, our distribution uh, for our platform through our, through, you know, our customers' own operated channels is is growing every day and we want to continue to help them and and uh, get this product launched uh, fully uh, in 2021. Cool. Okay, so um what can you find on Ready Up? Um you mentioned different events, maybe you can tell us more of the more of exactly what you find. Yeah, so right now you can go to readyup.com, you can check us out. Uh obviously the readyup.com is kind of a consumer facing uh product right now. Uh we want to offer that service to businesses uh so uh but you can go check out readyup.com right now and get an experience of like for your business like what you would uh you know like to possibly see on your own operated channel uh but readyup.com is an opportunity also for people that just want to know when events are coming up when a tournament's coming up and you can easily uh click on discover you can you can go through uh all the events are coming up and then actually actually if you register uh on readyup.com you can actually add those events to your native calendar on your phone. So if you want to sync it to your uh, Google Calendar or uh, uh, Android Calendar, um, you can do that very easily uh, through our system. And, and it's a cool way to keep up to date. Like I, I look at my calendar here on my phone, and you know I can see like I can see that my events coming up this weekend, right? So uh, and and on that uh, on that uh, actual calendar invite uh, or on that calendar sync that we have. It shows like the call to actions, like buy, download game, buy uh, merchandise, sign up, uh, and it gives all the details of what's going on in the event as well. So there's a lot of call to actions to get people to engage and to be in, 
informed. And, and now you know that this event's coming up. You can tell your friends. You can share it with your friends. You can, uh, you know, if I know like a big, like say a world championship's coming up and I want to watch it just like the Super Bowl, I can call my friends up like, oh, hey, I for, forgot, but this weekend is the League of Legends World, world Finals. Like I want to watch it. Hey, gamer friends, do you want to come over to my house and let's like you know, watch watch it together? Or do you want to log on to Discord and talk while the game's going on and just kind of hang out and you know have a drink? <laughs> uh, like that that like that's kind of like the uh, the aura I want to kind of happen with Ready Up. I want this thing kind of naturally just kind of flow and and I think we can offer a lot of people uh, a lot of uh, value in Ready Up. Before Radio Ready Up, how would people find events? and merchandise and things. Yeah, so you literally have to rely on word of mouth uh, in a lot of ways, or do you have to find out from your, your biggest favorite influencer and, and rely on them to give you the information? Uh, but you know, for me in the past, it was always about me being on IRC, which is like kind of like the early version of Discord, right? Uh, but it's you know, basically relying on my friends or my network of friends to tell me, hey, there's an event coming up. Oh, there's a tournament in St. Louis. You need to go to it. Like, like all those kind of things, like, if I didn't have a friend online to tell me, I wouldn't have won as like, I can count probably tens of thousands of dollars that I would not have won if I didn't have a friend tell me about it. And so all those opportunities are just missed if you just don't know. And uh, so I guess that's like kind of a, a, a very good example of, of how it could be used. Do those friends get a cut if they tell you about a tournament and you win? <laughs> oh no 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 they 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 get no cut no no uh, I'll, I'll i'll be nice to them i'll practice a little bit more or do something but uh no all my friends i i remember the guy that you know i, I bought that guy some drinks so uh, you know th these guys just wanted me to be in it too i mean they were you know i was in a position where i was you know people knew me and they liked to see me compete so i was kind of an added value to the event in, in general and so uh but yeah i mean some friends uh you know, I would train with or I would work with. And uh, that was kind of like a, a trade in kind kind of thing. Like, you know, these people I actually train with and I help them get better. And when we go to the tournament together, uh, they have access to me and to uh, train with me. So I used to have like a small network of people I trained with and I would have like a, a hotel like as a land center. I'd have like four computers in, in there and I would basically have my small group of people um, that I trusted. And, and some of these people that were part of my network that let me know about tournaments and so forth became part of that network to train with me. And, uh, it was a great, it was a great, it was a great time. I, I loved, uh, I loved training and practicing. That was some of the funnest times of my life. And I was competing in the tournaments and winning the tournaments were the, the biggest high uh, of my life, but, uh, the training and practicing was a lot of fun too. Sure. And there was a great picture of you in a helicopter. I want to hear what, um, the story behind that. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, you know, this is me. Uh, gosh, this was like 2007, I think, or uh, 2008. Um, and I landed in France and was going to Monaco. Uh, and I just, uh, this was like, you know, it was a girlfriend I had uh, back then. But, she, you know, we actually, I was being really sweet that day. Uh, she, I, I, you know, I told her, uh, you know, I, I asked her on a date like two years before this. Uh, and uh, basically I asked her like, would you like go on a date with me? And I was like, sorry, my helicopter's broken. So <laughs> th then we, then we dated for a couple of years and this was the two year mark. And uh, I took her to France and uh, went to Monaco and I was like, Oh, I got the helicopter fix. And then we took the helicopter to uh, Monaco. It was, it was a, it was a, it was a great date. Oh, that's, that's a great story. So how can someone partner with, ready up yeah i mean you can just go to readyup.com uh we have uh, the contact uh information in there to uh you know reach out to us to do business um like i said we have been working with uh, esl and nace and uh cyber athlete for southeast asia and so forth and uh just reach out reach out to us on readyup.com and we can uh you know look at possibly working with your uh channel of distribution with your own operated channels so uh, definitely reach out to us. Okay, and there was another question from a um, a viewer. Um, do you think that people in esports need a good personality, or uh, do they just need to be good at the game? So, I, I would say you need to ha like if you really want to take off, you have to have the personality kind of go with it a little bit. 
uh, just like you see in any sport, you see these guys who are ma- like insanely talented, uh, but you know, maybe they don't have the TV charisma or whatever the deal is. And they just, they don't get the deals like the that deals outside of their endemic uh, brands or business. Right. So to, to really step outside the box, um, you kind of have to have something that, you know, that, you know, other people don't have. Um, but if you're very talented and very skilled, you'll find a way to make money from it or monetize it. it just, uh, it's, you know, being good is very important. Don't, don't get me wrong. That's probably the number one thing. And then we can figure out the other side. And we've definitely <laughs> enjoyed your personality today, Fatality. So um, we do need to wrap it up. But thank you so much for being my guest. No, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for uh, walking me down memory lane. It was, uh, it was enjoyable. Fantastic. And thank you to the viewers who submitted questions. And thank you for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be TV producer Jay Moses. We'll be talking about esports and Hollywood. See you then. <laughs>